This is your boyfriend. Well, good news. Your boyfriend isn't petrified anymore. Bad news. Uh, your boyfriend is now a woman and is only walking to the left. Holy umbrellas, Batman! Yep. That's, uh... Really the intro I landed on. Anyway, this is Holy Umbrella, one of my more obscure, interesting, kind of hard to find and pretty expensive Super Famicom pickups, and one I was quite passionate about and was really glad I got to stream. And I've got all that footage, so let's show it off and shed a little bit more light on this rather interesting game. I quite like it. It's not perfect, but I think it's definitely worth your time. Now, the story follows this random hero kid. You can tell he's the hero kid because he's got the big yellow hat of being a hero. Also bright yellow shorts, so you know he's with it. This kid was running home from school one day as it was badly raining when he, quite conveniently, finds an umbrella. He happens to take this umbrella and upon doing so, he finds himself isekai'd to a completely different world where he's getting assaulted by a tank and this umbrella is the only weapon he has. This world is a little bit messed up. It is currently under the assault of Emperor Dondera, who is the single most flamboyant and camp character you will find on the Super Famicom, and that's in a world where Kefka exists. Seriously, this guy's like Kefka cranked up to like a million, and uh, I love him. He's, he's seriously such an amazing character. He is currently trying to destroy this world, and you're Kind of basically told to, you know, collect all the magical umbrellas, do some platforming challenges, defeat the same boss several times before they'll introduce a new one. Why did they choose that option? I don't know. Deal with one or two weird glitches, a quiz at one point, and some really fun platforming. As well as building up your party of potentially four people, all so that you can eventually go home. Yeah, it's not really all that much of a story. Honestly, I would be inclined to say it's a bit of an excuse of a story because the fact is, it doesn't take itself remotely seriously. It breaks the fourth wall frequently. It will actually break conventions of the game frequently. Facial animations, text box, and stuff will actually get broken by animations just for the sake of making it more hilarious and silly. It's a very lighthearted, fun game. In fact, there's like only one part in the game I can actively remember that was like actively sad, and that was kind of muted somewhat because of a weird glitch. I'll talk about that later. Either way, this is a weird world with some interesting characters, some fun teammates, and a really fun adventure to be had. I'm not gonna say the story's great, but it's fun, and it's silly, and it's well translated. You know, shoutouts to Team Eon Genesis for making basically all the quality translations ever. It's a platformer where you play as a kid with his bright yellow shorts using an umbrella to sort of grapple hook around, as well as glide across eventually because you get power-ups that give you different abilities and stuff to permanently change your movesets, as well as meet new teammates and stuff that all have different movesets. It is a very fun, sort of ever-evolving platformer because it starts out very, very basic. You have an attack, you have a jump, and you have the ability to use your umbrella's sort of cane handle as sort of a grappling hook. And from there, you gain teammates that can wall jump, kick, you eventually get the ability to run, although you get it like halfway through the game, which is concerning to say the least. It's, it's very slow up till that point. Uh, you've got teammates that will double jump, have the ability to fire projectile attacks. This game feels somewhat clumsy to play, especially because you don't get a run until halfway through. To further talk about how clumsy this game kind of is, it has grappling hooks in it, using your umbrella, and I think every game is better with grappling hooks. Grappling hooks in general are just awesome, but this game doesn't really apply a grappling hook in any meaningful way in terms of how it mechanically works. You use them mainly to swing across gaps, but there's no sense of physics to them. The game basically just applies a jump, so there's no like swinging or throwing yourself across gaps using the momentum built up from your grapple. It's just, well, you jump when you say let go, basically. It's it's very clunky, and it's not a great feeling grapple system, and it does make landing on certain platforms a little bit difficult, but the ever-expanding moveset makes progressing through the game feel tangible, and it makes it feel more and more engaging. Learning that, oh hey, I've got a new ability, where can I go back to get, you know, new treasures that I couldn't get before? 
that will give me more attack or defense or health that will help against the bosses because the bosses are a little bit grim in this game. The platforming in Holy Umbrella is quite solid and ever evolving and it works really, really well. While you run around these environments, you will fight all sorts of enemies. These guys are cute, filled with personality and are varied and fun to fight. Some of them are really obnoxious. Getting poisoned in this game is pretty much a death sentence. It kind of plays with the same rules like an old school Famicom RPG would. If you don't have a healing item, you will take poison until you die. And the poison is very, very aggressive in this game. Fortunately, there aren't a lot of places where poison is applicable, but when it happens, you're probably gonna die a few times. Like I said, bosses in this game are a bit grim. Ignoring for the fact that you fight the first boss like four times in a row, although, you know, they vary up his moves and stuff, so it's it's a little different, but you're still fighting the same guy, it's kind of boring. Then after that you fight like the next boss twice, and then after that they decide, oh, you actually wanted like unique bosses. Sure, but at that point you're halfway through the game, so it's a little weird. Not sure why they decided to do that. The bosses themselves, though, are not handled all that well. Their hitboxes, I feel like, are, are just a little bit too big, especially with how slow you move. But in addition to that, some of them are just very, very aggressive, and if you've not fought the boss before, you might die. And if you die, you will respawn to the boss, but the game doesn't recover your health or even give you the health you had when you first entered the boss fight. It reduces you down to, like, 25% health, and if you used any healing potions or anything during the fight, those are gone. So, losing a fight is incredibly painful in this game. It will actively put you in a worse position if you lose than when you started, and that makes trying to win these fights especially not fun. And it gets pretty bad near the end when they decide to do a Mega Man style boss rush before the final boss. But the fact is, bosses are really the one thing about this game I would say is outright bad. And really, it's just how unforgiving they are, especially if you lose. Everything else for its clumsiness is still kind of charming in its own way. And the upbeat nature of the game, the goofy tone, the cute enemies and everything, it works well, I think. Maybe make a few saves before you fight bosses is all I'm saying, because they are unforgiving, and when you start losing, you're gonna start losing even more. When you're not in your 2D platforming adventuring stage, the game takes a top-down perspective where you can walk around towns, talk to various NPCs, as well as hit up the church to show off the fact that you wield an umbrella and that makes you some kind of hero, and get the newest elemental umbrella. Which, from what I can tell, they don't seem to do any more damage or anything, they all just generate different blocks that you can then utilize in platforming and projectile attacks. With maybe the exception of the water umbrella, which actively creates ice, which is useful for a couple early puzzles, but otherwise they kind of feel basically entirely identical. Other than that, you can go rest at inns, buy the same objects at every shop in town, as well as find permanent power-ups to your character strewn about the towns in treasure chests. There's handy little markers on the map to show when you've collected everything or when you're missing everything as well, which is a nice little quality of life thing that I definitely appreciate. Now, this game does have a couple weird instances, bugs, and glitches. First of all, I wouldn't recommend playing this game without a translation because this does that one thing that really nice import games do that kind of ruin everything. It has a quiz. So yeah, you're going to want a translation for this one. And even though there is a translation and it's a very good translation, I ran into one bug with it near the end where one of the text boxes messed up a little bit and then just permanently for the rest of the game there was two extra letters on screen. Always and I don't know why. There's also like this weird glitch I ran into without spoiling too much. You come into a town that is petrified and you're lamenting how everyone's turned to stone, you can't do anything with that. Except that if you talk to any of the petrified NPCs, they start moving and all turn into women for some reason. I don't think this game was bug tested like at all, to be honest. The weird thing about this game is for every negative thing I've said thus far, I'm still coming across with pretty much entirely a positive view of this game. With, of course, the exception of the bosses being a little bit too difficult and respawning on those bosses being massively unforgiving. The game itself is just a fun little import and I think it's definitely one worth looking into. Now the overall presentation to Holy Umbrella is tremendous. The visuals are fantastic. It's bright, it's colorful, it's vibrant. I really appreciate how in the castle of the princess that you first enter very early on in the game, it has sort of like a almost pastel color scheme that's not really used anywhere else. It feels like it does sort of utilize individual 
aesthetics for every sort of area, and I really appreciate that. The enemies are full of vibrancy and personality, as are all the characters. The animations are silly, and you, you can definitely tell that this is a game that does not want to be taken seriously and just wanted to have fun with things. And, you know, your, your characters' weird pratfalls when they get attacked and stuff show that in spades. The audio design itself is pretty tremendous, but I will say, with the exception of, like, the main theme, which is a, you know, jaunty, upbeat, sort of goofy track that they use to lighten certain moments up all over the place, not just for the first stage. With the exception of that, I really don't remember the soundtrack to this game, like, at all. Like, and that's not to say it's a bad soundtrack or anything, it's just, it's got one song that hits really hard and kind of meshes so well with the rest of this game's aesthetic, and then the rest of it just sort of falls by the wayside. Not bad, just really unmemorable. Overall, the presentation to Holy Umbrella is pretty solid, and it leads to an overall very joyous and silly package, which is what this game was definitely going for. Now, if you want a copy of Holy Umbrella on the Super Famicom, cheapest copy I am seeing right now is... Holy crap! This game is 200 plus dollars. Wow. Okay. Uh, I would easily recommend this as a game for people who want to import stuff because it is a fun, relatively easy to get into thing, and with the exception of that one quiz, probably pretty playable without any sort of translation, but that is an exorbitant cost for this game. Fortunately, there are reproductions that presumably do add the translation if that's how you want to go, and of course there's always other means as well, but this is a lot more expensive than I thought it was. Like, when I bought this game, it was probably half that price, if that. But even then, it did feel like a sort of niche cult classic in the making. It's not a perfect game, not by a long shot. And honestly, like I said, I'm kind of surprised listing out all the features of this game. With every positive, it was met with a negative. And yet, I still have overall a very positive feeling about this game. With the exception of the boss fights, you know, repeating the same bosses over and over and over. And of course, having the terrible checkpoint respawn system in those fights, making things actively harder if you fail the first time, which, you know, isn't going to make things better for you. You know, with that one exception out of the way, I think this is a really fun game. Sure, it's a little buggy, sure, it's a little glitchy, and yeah, sure, it's not the most perfectest game ever made, but I think it's fun. I, I think it's a game worth playing, especially if you're interested in weird imports on the Super Famicom. I think this is definitely one that you should look into, but that price, don't pay anywhere near that price. Okay, oh, well, that was bad. Oh, Ugh. that was close too. I don't know, the bosses in this game are definitely not my favorite bit of this. 